My name's Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who are impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. That looks like that's active. A couple of big dens in the line. Yeah. Oh, right there. Okay, yeah. This is it. This is what I was looking for. But there's it goes under there too. Oh, here we go. You um you can try, sweetheart. So this looks like it's one and the same. We'll just start here. Okay, you're fine. Just go on down. Okay. Do not touch the water. Okay. That water is deep and it is muddy, and you will just sink down until you disappear. There we go. Okay, girls, remember no rocks, no kicking stuff. You need to be quiet and don't run too much. It's definitely a mature den. It's not anything recently dug. We'll give him a second here and then we'll move him down. And there might even be a third one. Probably, there might even be one right there. Look, look. There's a muskrat here. I haven't seen anything of the muskrat. Just the way he's reacting, there's a muskrat here. Yeah, he's got one. Is that it? Oh no, it's a stick. Looks like a tail. Oh yeah, he's chasing one. Here it goes. That one's headed this way. That way shallower water. He saw it, he sees it. More. I knew there's more. Look at that. So there's two that just came yep. out. So that's four total. Ooh, almost got that, one. that was the second one bumped into him. Yep. We got three going this direction now. There's one going this way and there's three going that way. Look, look, look. Look, he's right on it. How yep. does he know it's there? I don't know how he knew it was there. Another one just came out. It's five. He knows it too. Oh! He missed it though. He didn't. Went right it. over it. You can see he didn't touch it because he didn't feel it. Look, you see all the wakes yeah. of all the muskrats swim in this direction. He sees them too. There's one. There's Coming right up on you there, Boone. Oh, he missed it. He just swam past when it swam past you. I see one, two, three, four, five, six in a row there. There's two more back there. Holy crap. That one that swam out and another one was poking his head out. Oh yeah, there's another. Holy crap, this is a this is getting borderline. That's record. eight in a row out of that hole. Click, 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 click. 
there are a few interesting facts that are made very obvious in this video. The first is that muskrats swim much faster than mink do. However, mink have a much greater speed on land and in water shallow enough for the animals to run rather than swim. Since this water is deep enough that the mink and muskrat must swim, it gives a significant advantage to the muskrat. But regardless of how much faster the muskrat may be, one advantage the mink will always have is endurance. A mink easily has five or six times the endurance of a muskrat. So if the mink can just keep the muskrat moving, eventually it will wear down and start to swim slow enough that the mink can finally catch it. I think we got seven this way. I think there's probably one still back there, but there were definitely eight out of that hole. <laughs> One disadvantage for the mink is that they don't have a bird's eye view the way we humans do. The mink's eye level is essentially water level, so it can be very difficult for the mink to see what looks so blaringly obvious to us humans with our bird's eye view. If you compare the mink's point of view to ours, it would be much like a bird sitting in a tree watching a confused human running around in a corn maze. To the bird, it looks so simple, because from their point of view up in the tree, they can see what's ahead of the human and where they should turn and, you know, how to get out of the maze. But down on the ground, the human is confused and running around in circles in the corn maze because we can't see very far ahead of where we are. Ooh, one went right under him. You may wonder why I don't help Boone by catching some of the muskrats with a net or allowing a dog to jump in and catch a few. If you watch many of my other muskrat hunting videos, you often see me using many different methods to catch as many muskrats as I can. Well, unlike most of the other locations you see me catch muskrats in, this particular location I'm not being paid to do pest control. So rather than catch as many muskrats as I can, I prefer to just let Boone do it. Boone can learn from the experience, and then after we catch one or two muskrats, we can just leave the others for another day. There's no reason to be greedy and catch them all when I'm not being paid to do pest control. Oh, 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 I think it let him astray. He might be submerged in way because they're got to be running out of air. Or maybe he went up there anyway. I definitely saw his tail whip at your feet. Definitely headed north. Yeah, this guy must have gone up from a hole. Picture. Yeah, he couldn't have gone anywhere else. He's got to breathe. Yeah, there's already water moving down here. This one pulsing. It pulsed really heavy just a second ago. I think he's got it. That's pretty handy. <laughs> Yeah, the water started surging and pulsing like yeah. there was something coming out or yeah, they may have been tangling right there. For the next couple hours, I tried unsuccessfully to get Boone to retrieve the muskrat he killed underground. You may wonder why I put so much effort into retrieving a muskrat after my mink kills it. And there are actually a few different reasons. The number one reason is I hate waste. One muskrat has enough meat on it to feed a small mink for almost a week. And the thought of this perfectly good meat going to waste bothers me to no end. I value animal life. Even if the animal in question is seen as an undesirable pest, I still don't like killing an animal and not using its meat. Also, muskrats have fur that's worth a little bit of money. So what I like to do is trade my muskrat furs to trappers. In turn, they give me the muskrat and beaver bodies from the animals they trap for their fur. So every muskrat carcass I retrieve is actually worth several weeks worth of mink food due to my trading their fur for more meat. Also, in the case of doing pest control, I don't get paid unless I can prove we actually killed the muskrat. 
So every muskrat left underground is more than just wasted meat and fur, it's also a lost paycheck. So from both a moral and a financial standpoint, every muskrat that gets left underground is a frustrating waste for me. Getting a mink to consistently retrieve their kill is hands down the most frustrating and complicated part of working with a mink. Not only are they so incredibly difficult to train to retrieve, but even worse is if you try and dig down and grab their kill using a ferret finder, then the mink typically moves their kill to a new part of the den. I've been frustrated trying to figure out a better way to train mink for years now. During this time, I've often wished that I could simply train a tiny dog to go down the muskrat hole and retrieve the dead muskrat for me. Even the most stubborn of dogs are a breeze to train when compared to a mink. Problem is, little purse dogs who might be small enough to fit are highly unlikely to be brave and driven enough to go down a muskrat hole. And hunting dogs bred to go down holes are typically too large to fit in a tiny little muskrat den. So after filming this frustrating video, and actually two others just like it that weren't worth showing, I discovered a line of super small working dachshunds, bred specifically for fitting down rabbit holes. These are the Black Hawk Falconry Dachshunds. Their mission is to consistently produce dachshunds who are small enough to go anywhere a rabbit can go. The Black Hawk Falconry Dachshunds are some of, if not the smallest earth dogs in the country when it comes to size of holes they can fit down. I decided to go and see these little dogs in action, and recently shared my experience on one of my previous videos. If you haven't seen this video yet, click on the link in the description below, or the link at the end of this video, and you'll get to see it. After seeing firsthand just how small of a hole these little dogs could fit down, I decided to try and bring one home and see if I could train it to retrieve muskrats. The little dachshund I brought home is named Bella, and she is just barely over a year old. She's the same little dog who killed her first rabbit in our video. She has a little bit of hunting experience, but I will need to teach her how to retrieve. So hopefully after a couple weeks of training, we will be able to go out and start using her to bring back muskrats when Boone decides not to. Now if you're really wanting to dive into mink and learn the nitty gritty details, I would strongly recommend you read my book, The New Sport of Minkinry. If you would like to support us, you can buy a shirt or hat, or consider becoming one of my faithful patrons. Just go to the links in the description below.